the state control. Drummond at the head of the key. This is Benny Bolton. Mike Giomi working on Aloha. Shackleford tips it in. The Iowa bench screaming that that ball may have uh, been touched in the ring. Shackleford very active going to the offensive boards. He's really been negated, and we've really based a lot of that on that wrist injury where he has a hairline fracture. Personal foul inside, and this is going to go against either Benny Bolton or Charles Shackleford. It will go against Bolton. To set the scenario, Bob, it's amazing that Iowa, for example, at 6 in the morning had a team meeting. They were up as we're playing in Alaska time right now. It's 10 a.m. Jimmy Valvano, he had his team sleep in a little bit. Inside to Horton. Over Giomi. Ball deflected. And Iowa maintains possession. 35 is Kevin Gamble. D.J. Armstrong, the point guard from Detroit. Lohan draws Shackleford. 2-0, NC State just underway. This is a winner's bracket game in the semifinal round. Horton inside over Giomi. Rejected and goaltending is called. He got that ball on a downward flight. Excellent call by Lenny Wirtz of the Atlanta Coast Conference. He's right on top of the play. A very intense official. Take another look at it inside. Well, take a look at this angle right here. Here comes Shackleford. That ball is definitely coming down. He's got to get that ball going up. It was goaltending. As we come back live, another personal foul against Iowa. Shackle for number 33. As we look at Shaq right here, he's had that hammy bone that's been fractured. It's a hairline fracture. We look at Dr. Tom Davis, the Shakespearean kind of coach on the sideline. He and Jimmy Valvano have met seven times previous. Tom was coaching at Lafayette. Jimmy at Bucknell. And Dr. Tom owns a 5-2 to two advantage over Coach Pitt. Drummond just firing on the foul shot. Drummond's the kind of guard we've talked about. He's not a bashful, will shoot the basketball. He hasn't met a shot yet that he doesn't like. He's from out of Sacramento Community College in California, where he was the junior college player of the year in California. One for two for Kenny Drummond, and a three to two lead for the Wolfpack. Interesting matchup with Drummond playing head to head on B.J. Armstrong at the point guard position. Kevin Gamble, Loha, they're working around to Ed Horton. Here's Roy Marble. Inside to Armstrong, and he got it around Shackleford. Good ball movement, but Kenny Drummond really lost an awareness where B.J. Armstrong was on the floor. Armstrong played in a solid high school program. Brother Rice in Birmingham, Michigan. Shackleford with a hook. When he starts to give them inside scoring, their perimeter game will really be much more valuable. Five to four, NC State. Roy Marble penetrates, and Benny Bolton reaches in. Marble has a great first step. He's very quick to the basketball. When you look right here at Benny Bolton, Bolton should not have the quickness to be able to check Marble. You'll look at this club here, and Jimmy Valvano will rotate into a zone defense. I don't believe he can play man-to-man -man on Iowa. Lohan triggers out of the corner. Kevin Gamble, three-pointer missing, and Lambion high to scrape it down for the Wolfpack. This is Bolton. Knocked away. They maintain possession, leading 5 4. North Carolina State seems to be a little bit more alive. I thought they were really flat for most of that game against Texas, but I don't want to take anything away. Bobby Welk's team really, I thought, outplayed North Carolina State and certainly, I thought, deserved to win. Three pointer for Drummond. Drummond has hit 6 of 9 this season, counting that one. He's got four points in the game. He's a unique point guard. He thinks shot. Thinking foul right here. He bumps into B.J. Armstrong. He's not a creator and an innovator. In other words, he's not going to be innovative and break down the defenses, but he's going to give you point production at the point position. The Iowa Hawkeyes defeating Alaska Anchorage to advance. Lojas hit a three-pointer yesterday. This is this one. But Iowa rebounds. Kevin Gamble. NC State had a tough time at Texas yesterday on their defensive glass, and Iowa getting the offensive board here. Oh, it should have been an goal. offensive foul. Definitely an offensive foul. Marble post inside. He makes contact on a defensive player with a free hand, no call. 8-6, NC State. Shackleford around Lojas for the reverse. It looks like the real Charles Shackleford. Shack took it to the rack that time and really showed the quickness that he displayed last year. Armstrong is short. 
And a foul coming up on Iowa's Kevin Gamble. Dick, here's a keen Iowa facing another top 20 club in NC State yet. 10 a.m. in the morning, as you mentioned, here in Anchorage. Empty seats in the arena. And without the home crowd, it's a, it's a contrast, to be sure. It's contrast, Bob. But remember, we talked about it. The great players, the Jerry West, the Isaiah Thomases, I don't care what time you play, they can do it. They come to play. I think psychologically, we've developed, as we watch Giomi stick that 15-foot jump shot, we develop a little bit of an alibi and excuse for the players. The great ones do it no matter what hour and what time. Here's Gamble. And Lohas. Marble on the baseline. Blocked by Shackelford. Lohas picks it up and scores. Lohas demonstrates some good inside scoring. Look at Shackelford running the break. Lohas kicks it out to Armstrong. It's a four on two Iowa break with the layup missed. Tip up. No. State rebound with Betty Bolton. Up the floor to Drummond. Windshield wiper basketball. An anchorage. Here's Shaq and he's rejected by Lohas. Excellent defensive play by Brad Lohaus. Marble puts it in. Good transition basketball. Really an excellent play. Very unselfish in the break. Number 23, Roy Marble from out of Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan produces more outstanding players per capita. I've said this time and time again than most cities in America. And I'll give you some names later of Flint products. Lambia looking for Shackleford and finds it. Lambie out open, two-pointer, in and out. That's the example of good inside-outside play. The ball goes to Shackleford, he draws the crowd, and he kicks it right back open. Lohas for three. NC State ball. Lohas is a seven-footer who plays like really 6-6. Six, six. Time out on the floor, 15-22 to go in the half, tied at 10. NC State, Iowa, tied at 10. Seven-footer Brad Lohas from Arizona, Dick, does not have the reputation as a rejector, but that might be changing. Excellent play by Lohas. Perfectly timed this. Comes from the rear. Lots of hustle aggressiveness. Uses the right hand. If he used the left hand there, he would have made contact on Shackelford. Excellent defensive play. And the point I'd like to clarify, Bob, he plays, if we look at Vanilla Gorilla, Al Lorenzen. You talk about tough, hard-nosed. He plays like a 6'6 player, low house, and that he's a perimeter jump shooter, but one of the most improved players that I've laid eyes on early in the season. Shackleford, maneuvers and score. He made a 180. I'm telling you something, Shackleford right now is displaying the kind of talent that has been projected. They expect him to pick up the load with Chris Washburn going on to the NBA, which I've said time and time again was a major mistake for Washburn, very immature. Iowa ties the game on Kevin Gamble's jump shot. Gamble gives them the long-range jump shot. Now, here's the change of defenses in a timeout. A 2-2-1 press. Tom Davis, for years, has been really an authority on the zone trap. Giomi puts it in. And officials time as Horton is injured under the basket for Iowa. Giomi gives them a power forward. Came out of Indiana, where he played for Bob Knight. Left there a year and a half ago. And I've said the other day, people get a big kick out of it when I keep telling them how. Jimmy Valentin and Vandal said, please don't use that line again. How he went from General Patton to playing for Sergeant Bilko. I promised Jimmy I would not use that again. NC State leading by two. Two-three zone. Bill Jones in the ball game for Iowa at point for B.J. Anderson. Outside, Gamble scores again. He just missed a couple of three-pointers. The game tied at 14. Gamble and Ed Horton were teammates in high school. They played together at Lanphier High School out in Springfield, Illinois. Lambia fights for it, and Lorenzen pulls it down. Lorenzen was projected to be a great high school player, recruited by Lute Olson. That man has found his spot. Kevin Gamble, three in a row from the same location. He scored six. Don't be surprised to see Jimmy Valvano go to a box and one and shut down the hot shooter. Jim has been noted for that. He changes defenses, and I would not be shocked to see him go to a box and one on Gamble. Bill Jones picks up the foul for Tom Davis' Iowa Hawkeyes. You mentioned that defense, and we may alert our folks next time down floor. It's a 1-3 with a chaser. Well, it's a 1-3, and they put a guy on that 
hot shooter. Sometimes he plays it out of a box and one, and sometimes he plays it out of a two-three set and then rotates the guy on to the hot player. Drummond misses the three, but Chucky Brown is there. Chucky's got great bounce off the floor. He's a typical athlete. North Carolina State has a lot of bodies. I think that Jimmy Valvano's got to be a psychologist to be able to keep all the players happy in getting them PT, playing time. Traveling violation. This game tied for the fifth time at 16. Take a look at Al Lorenzen. He really has never lived up to the billing coming out of high school. He could have been a product, in all fairness to Al, of getting a lot of publicity to where he never had the opportunity to play against a tough inner city kid in the large urban areas. Kelsey Weems steps on the sideline. That's a turnover, giving Iowa the basketball. Kelsey says, Lenny, Lenny Wirtz, you're from the ACC. You're not supposed to see that at 10 in the morning. Lenny Wirtz, one of the better officials. I love him. I think he's got a lot of shtick, and he loves the game. I was Roy Marble. In the game for NC State has been underneath, along with Luster. B.J. Anderson, two-point. B.J. Armstrong, Bob. B.J. Armstrong with a great steal defensively. Excellent anticipation. Armstrong backs it. Misses. Lorenzen. And he's fine. Walker Lambia got him on the arm. B.J. did not take a good shot after making a good steal. Good anticipation by Armstrong. But an excellent offensive rebound by Al Lorenzen. He gets good inside position. Number 44. He's got inside position of Giomi. He says, no, Giomi, get out of my way. I got the big body. Gorilla. Remember Chocolate Thunder, Darryl Dawkins? Chocolate Thunder, unfortunately, plays like a vanilla pudding many times <laughs> in New Jersey. <laughs> Al Lorenzo making that switch from center to power forward. Started last year, coming off the bench for Tom Davis. He looks like he, going. Bob, he looks like he belongs in Harris Island. I mean, he looks like a U.S. Marine. I'll tell you something. I'd want him defending our country. Both teams are that standing depth. A lot of folks to be shuttled in and out of the lineup today. Jeff uh, Moe coming in for Iowa. You mentioned the outstanding depth, and I think depth, and I think that's a positive and can be a negative. I think there's a tendency for coaches when you have players 9, 10, 11 deep, you want to try to keep everyone happy and content, and you break up the rhythm and the flow of your game. 18-16 Iowa with 12.45 to play in the first half. A lot of these Iowa Hawkeyes remember that game in the NCAAs last year when NC State won by two. They're trying to add some time on the clock right now. They, if you take a look now, Lorenzen on a free throw line. You mentioned last year in Minnesota when Jimmy Valvano's team beat George Raveling's club. They're missing a very important player, really one of the keys of Iowa's basketball team, is Sir Jamalot, Jerry Wright. I mean, Gary Wright. And Gary's not here because of a fractured wrist, and they expect him back in mid-January. Here comes the full-court press. Lorenzo will trap after the ball is thrown in bounds. He can run that side of the baseline now. He doesn't have to stand where the official's handing him the ball. This year, the official will not designate a player to throw the ball in. You can have anyone throw it in. Scrappy Iowa just missed the turnover. Bolton to Dins inside. Well, that's a hot potato. Bolton missing. And Marble commits the foul. Boy, Marble pushing and shoving underneath. And Lonnie Worth is Johnny on the spot with a call. Here's the jump shot by Bolton. Bolton, a stationary jump shooter. has got to be a little bit more versatile in rebound. There's a lot of contact inside. They get Bolton with the push. I'm sorry, not Bolton. They get Roy Marble with the push from out of Flint, Michigan. 19-16, Iowa leading NC State. Iowa changing defenses, now sitting in a 2-3 zone. Now it looks like a 3-2 zone. They take the point guard and they slide him down. Marble moves with the movement of the ball. Number 23, watch Marble slide down inside. Falls him out of the corner. And that's over the backboard and a bound. Benny from out of Damascus High School is an excellent stationary jump shooter. And it's a matter of time before his jumper starts falling. We saw it yesterday how he really was brilliant down the stretch. But he's got to give a little bit more versatility. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive rebounding. 
Dick, I've got to believe it was a big key for Iowa with the new staff coming in over the summer to take that trip to the Far East that Tom could implement his offense and defense with these players and get a head start on October the 15th. That certainly was a plus. Next year, if you play in foreign turf like that, to get an advantage, you can't play in one of the early tournaments like the Great Alaska Shootout. There's nope. a block by Shackelford with the left hand. Drummond. And Drummond knocked it out of Hill's hand, but Iowa will have possession. 11.49 left to play in the first half, and the Iowa Hawkeyes enjoy a three-point lead over NC State. The scoreboard arithmetic, Iowa leading by three. Here comes that block shot by Shackelford. Bob, in analyzing the block shot, notice how Shackelford uses the left hand. Two of the greatest shot blockers in all of basketball. Bill Russell, certainly a Hall of Famer and a great shot blocker during his days at San Francisco and with the Boston Celtics. A left-handed player, David Robinson, today the most prolific shot blocker in America from out of the U.S. Naval Academy. Again, a left-handed player. The reason they have a distinct advantage, majority of our shooters shoot from the right side. And being a left-handed player, that's a positive plus, but you must combine it with timing also. Iowa attacking. Marble inside. Puts it in. That's Michael Jordan. That's a mini Michael Jordan move. Excellent baseline quickness by Marble. Marble from Flint, Michigan. Here's Drummond on a drive and a foul coming up. And it's going to be a push in there on Kevin Gamble. I think you were talking about the players from Flint, Michigan earlier. Flint, Michigan's had so many great players. Right now, Jeff Grayer, to me, is an All-American from out of Iowa State. But Johnny Rohr has a great club. Terrence Green plays in the backcourt with the Paul University from Flint, Michigan. Glenn Rice, an outstanding shooter, plays for the University of Michigan, is from Flint, Michigan. Darrell Johnson and the McGee sisters who played on that great University of Southern Cal basketball team, the women's team, several years ago from Flint. So Flint has a host of great players. Iowa by five. Bolton scores. That's the jump shot we were talking about. Benny Bolton, an excellent perimeter shooter. Brad Lohan. Leading into the corner. Gamble. Back around. Horton. Now Armstrong with it. Calvano in a man-to-man -man defense. Changing from the zone. Playing some man-to-man -man right now. Gamble's been hot. And Iowa leads by five. Gamble, an excellent stationary jump shooter, and he's got great size from the back four. Gamble at 6'6", can look right over the top of the defense. Chucky Brown with a nice right-hand follow. Four points for Chucky Brown, NC State with his three. Jimmy really likes Chucky Brown. Gamble, misfired that one, but a nice tip in for Iowa. And a personal coming up, Ed Horton was there. Ed Horton, a 6'8 player, a big, strong inside player. Not a great jumper, but gets good position. Looks at the official as the threes counted. The personal on Chucky Brown. It's his first. Ed Horton has scored four at 12 yesterday against Alaska Anchorage. He played at Lampier High School also at Springfield, Illinois. Was a tremendous baseline player coming out of high school. Was really rated very high by most of the services. Giovi. They just keep coming at you, hoping to get that spurt out of their pressure, force a turnover. There's Marble, number 23, playing a point of the zone, but now will slide with the movement of the basketball. If the ball goes to the wing, he slides to the inside. 10-minute mark of the first half. 26-20, Iowa, leading NC State. Very active zone. Marble gives him size at the point to bother the perimeter shooting with Drummond. Shackleford. And B.J. Armstrong runs it up. Three on one for Iowa. Oh, great pass. Moe's goal. Tremendous pass by B.J. Armstrong. His daddy, Ben Armstrong, has got to be jumping with joy in Birmingham, Michigan. Diomi quickly up to the shack. Well, Diomi throws it in. They're going to wave it off, though. And Diomi picks up the foul. Tremendous play by Diomi despite the foul. He's a very physical player. He definitely crashes over the top. Shackelford loses control. Hairline fracture to the front, right wrist. Here comes Giomi. I mean, he just clears his man away. Hey, the general Bob Knight would be proud of Mr. Giomi playing that physical. Iowa sees in control. It's 28-20. 
Change of defense again right now by Valvano. He's in that 2-3 zone. Gamble. Mohans on the wing. Go, go. Mo jumps it over to P.J. Two-pointer, Armstrong with Swiss Iowa with a 10-point lead. Here comes the pressure by Mo on both. That pressure really takes you out of any kind of rhythm, any kind of offensive sets that you'd like to run. They have enough bodies. They can rotate a lot of people to have fresh people on the floor. Foul inside. And it's on Lohan. Lohaus comes from out of the Phoenix, Arizona area. He was a red shirt. He had some problems physically, sat a year out, his first personal foul. He played in an area where Mark Allery starred when Allery was in high school, the former Duke super player. I love Mark Allery now playing in the NBA. Coach Vitale, one of your keys to winning today was for Iowa to shut down Benny Bolton. He scored only two, averaging 19 a game. Here's Chucky Brown at the line. To beat North Carolina State, Bob, we talked about it. You've got to shut down their perimeter game. They have an outstanding perimeter shooting basketball team. Jimmy Valvano said yesterday, as we look at Bolton, number 23, that he feels this club from the perimeter can shoot better than his team in 1983 that won the national championship with Gannon, Wittenberg, and Lowe. Chucky Brown goes two for two. And the Iowa lead is eight. I was playing in that tough Big Ten. I really believe the Big Ten this year will be the best conference in America when you're talking Purdue and Indiana and Illinois and also Michigan and Michigan State, certainly on auto automatics. Walker Lambie out in the ball game for State for Brown. And Giomi with a block on the baseline. That will be number two against the Newark, Ohio senior. Not a good defensive move by Giomi. Doesn't beat the defense offensive player to the spot. Ed Horton will be stepping up to the free throw line for the Hawkeyes. Very important defensively as we watch Valvano calling out signals from the sideline that you have when you're playing man-to-man -man, great vision of the ball in your man so many kids get caught staring at the basketball Ed Horton hitting the free throw speaking of Indiana and on Tuesday night Mr. Vitale it's the Hoosiers and the Fighting Irish get a chance to see the sartorial splendid Digger Phelps and the general Bob Knight Horton goes one for two on Iowa leads, 31-22. I was playing at 3-2 zone. Now they have the big fella at the point, Gamble at 6-6. Six, six. Now watch number 35. He's very important in that he can really disturb the perimeter shooter with his size, take away any jump shot out of Drummond's hand. This is GLM. Air ball. Ooh, he's going to make pass. He's going to make my whole air ball team shooting that kind of Jay. Armstrong. And out of the corner, Gamble. Enough luck all the way around and out. Jack like, for rebound. I like the way Armstrong distributes the basketball. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense, the way he runs the ball up the court. <laughs> NC State trailing by nine. Mohawk's got a hand on it. You notice 35 at the top, 6'6", six, six, very unique. You play the big guy, then he sinks inside to give you an extra rebounder as well. Three-pointer for Benny Bolton. 31-25, Iowa. I think Bolton likes that three-point play? Just a chance. Mohawk, so now the jumper by Horton is good. Ed Horton shows for a big guy that he has perimeter range also. I love this guy, Mo, back there. You talk about a tough player, Jeff Mo, number 20. Very tenacious. But a foul against Iowa. And Lohas picking up number two, and he'd like to have this one back, Dick. Well, the big fella playing very aggressively in the backcourt, which is typical. They can afford fouls from their people because they have so many bodies to rotate in. Bill Jones coming in right now, played a lot of minutes last year for George Raveling, and I'm sure he doesn't want to be on a pine too long. He wants to get on that floor. He was a starter most of the last season. Iowa looking for a quarterback to replace Andre Banks. And I think they found one in D.J. Armstrong. They were saying that Mike Reeves, who's out with an injury, had orthoscopic knee surgery. 
and he'll be coming back was really going to be the starting point guard. I can't believe, and this is nothing negative on Reeves, that he can beat out B.J. Armstrong. I think B.J. is the little catalyst and the guy that is important to this club in getting them into their offensive sets. Yesterday's hero for NC State, Walker Lambia. With all the controversy, everybody forgot the pressure on Lambia that he went to that line and he delivered that one-on-one. -on -one. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. It's Iowa 33, NC State 27. Take a look at number 35 right now, Kevin Gamble. He's playing the point of the 3-2 zone. He's on the top of the circle. He'll now slide and move with the movement of the ball. The ball goes to the wing, and now he goes inside. If they had a post player, Shackelford, as Benny Bolton just drilled it, he would be in a fronting position on the offensive player. These are two top 20 teams, NC State and Iowa. But Dick, as you well know, a lot of programs going uptown this year, including this Campanelli out there in California. He has a great backcourt. When you rate the great backcourts in America, I think number one is the combo of Dean. Dean Smith's combo, Kenny Smith and Jeff Lebo, but Washington and Johnson can really play for the University of California. Travel of the Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> you know, you mentioned California going uptown. Ricky Pitino, Providence, that program's heading uptown. Miami, Tito Horford, and Murray Arnold with that club. People are thinking of a backcourt, but he have to have both feet in the ball across that line. And then if you go back, it would be a violation. He did not have the ball in both feet across the midcourt line. 14, Benny Del Negro in the game for today. Bolton missing. Lambiot crashing. And a foul coming up. And it's a personal against Iowa. Benny Bolton likes to play horse. He likes to just camp out behind that three-point play area, catch the ball, and shoot the jump shot. There's Benny. He's going to shoot the jumper. Now here comes the pounding, the physical contact. And these two schools going at it. We said how they played against each other in the NCAA. Wright was brilliant in that game for Iowa, but North Carolina State came from about 15 down to pull that game out. Walker Lambiot has gone three for three at the line. You know, we mentioned yesterday in that controversy, Blaine Sylvester, the official, I thought it should have been a no call. It was contact was 30 feet from the basket. Up, Some people questioned if it was nice rebound by Lambiot. Bad oh, shot. Oh. Giomi pulls it down, had it stripped away, and Mo brings it out of the pack for Iowa. I thought it was incidental contact yesterday, and there should have been no call. Let a team Lorenzen win the game. walks again. There's a walk by Lorenzen. Closing that point off, Bob, letting a team win the game on the free throw line after it was all kinds of contact in the three-second area. I thought that was a poor call by Lane Sylvester of the WAC Conference. Dick, you mentioned about the pressure on Lambie after the free throws. Another thing that was lost in the flurry of activity at the end was NC State's great comeback. They're sloppy right now in their half-court game. Really sloppy. There's the turnover. You're right. You know, everybody forgot about how North Carolina State came from 11 down with 4.13 on the clock. B.J. Armstrong coming back into the game for Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's got the ball coming over midcourt now. Lohan. And also in the ball game for the Hawkeyes is Kent Hill. Personal coming up on Lambia. Hill played well yesterday. Gave him really productive minutes. Very physical on the inside. Lambia at second. And that's going to send Roy Marble to the foul line. He's taking Michael Jordan's number. And he'd like to take a few of his moves, too. Well, we keep saying mini version of Michael Jordan. As I said earlier, that's Michael Stoffett because really there's only one Michael Jordan. He's all world when you compare him players. Shackleford and a foul. A reach in against Iowa's Jeff Moe. Shackleford's got to develop a little bit more of a post move inside. He wants to turn constantly and shoot that little jump hook shot, and he's got to get a little variety to his game, a little drop step, power move to the basket, some quick inside moves. Now Jimmy looks bored with the whole thing. There he is with his brain trust. Dickie Stewart to his left. Ed McLean to his left, his assistant. Shackleford at the line. Six points today. 50% free throw shooter. Puts that one in. Came from the same high school that produced Cornbread Maxwell, who led the University of North Carolina Charlotte to the Final Four the year that Al McGuire won the national championship in 1977. You were talking about Michael Jordan. He only had 41 last night against the Lakers. 
Hey, points for the Shack. It's 33-30, Iowa leading. Iowa had that 10-point lead, but with a perimeter shooter like a Bolton with that three-point play a little bit earlier, you get right back into the game quickly. 5.53 left to go in the first half. Official doing a little maintenance work right now. He's going to collect a double check. <laughs> Brad Lohan. They get it in for Iowa. Very difficult to get the enthusiasm and the spirit at this hour in the morning, especially when you don't have the hometown crowd here and, and cheering. But we got two outstanding teams. and We're seeing some good basketball because these two clubs are legitimate top 25 teams. Armstrong and Moe working in the backcourt. Roy Marble. North Carolina State goes into a 1-2-2 zone with Vinny Del Negro at the point, number 14. Lambiot almost got it and then runs over Mo. He just missed that steal. Lambiot doesn't have the good quickness and the anticipation ability. His body, his legs can't motor. There we see him. Lambiot just a stretch. He says a little bit more. Give me a little more quickness and I would have had myself a deuce. Stepping up to the free throw line, Indianapolis junior Jeff Moe. Missed the front end, but gets the offensive rebound. Now a whistle. And it's a charge coming up on Moe. Then he works with the call. Moe in the air. You're susceptible to having the charge against you when you leave your feet. Now watch Moe right here. He's up in the air, defensive player Bolton's got both feet planted to the ground. He's in a legal defensive position. Wipe that play right out. That's meaningless. The offensive foul came prior to the play with the flicker. So Benny Bolton will move up to the line for NC State. A quiet first half for Benny. One three-pointer and five points for the game. Bolton has not missed a free throw in two games. 14 straight. We have a player control charging situation and a team control, and that was a team control, and therefore he shoots the one and one But to make that point, if you're a young kid out there, you don't want to leave your feet when you're driving with the basketball in terms of making a pass in the lane. As soon as you do that, you're up in the air. Somebody steps in. There's no way you can get away from that offensive foul. Bolton was seven, and the Iowa lead is down to one. 33-32. Very active zone right now. Mohas kicks it out to Marble. Inside the hill. Tipped by Lohan. Can't teach seven feet. And that's the big fella delivers right inside. He's got a nice, nice touch. And I'll tell you something. He's going up in his stock in the eyes of a lot of NBA people. Personal on Marble. It's his second. Five minutes remaining in the first half. 35-32, Iowa leading, and Benny Del Negro is going to be coming up to the free throw line. Del Negro was responsible for that first win over Navy. Came off the bench, gave him 18 big points, played in front of the home crowd. He's from Springfield, Massachusetts, and his dad was a mighty proud guy going around saying, that's my boy, Vinny. The Grand Alaska shootout featuring two top 20 teams here today, Iowa and NC State Monday night, the Tar Heels. They were winners last night in Hawaii. They'll be taking on the Bruins of UCLA Monday night here on ESPN. I can't wait to sit at courtside after taking that red eye going down there to L.A. and see Reggie Miller hooking up, shooting the five-point play. He shoots him from out of the locker room. Here's the 1-2-2 zone. 35-34 Iowa. Brian Howard playing the wing at about 6-7, number 22. Another athlete that Valvano's trying to get some playing time for. Iowa, not a good perimeter team. There's a turnover. Steal by Shackelford. Benny Del Negro. Remember, Del Negro's got three-point range. He's going to shoot it. It's going up. Three-pointer for Benny Del Negro as the clairvoyant coach Vital calls another one. He's got three-point range. He hit two big ones against Navy and that heartbreaking loss for Pete Herman. Marble on a nice drive. Oha keeps it alive and a foul coming up. And a personal coming up 
Lenny Wirtz with the call. You can hear him all over Alaska. <laughs> the foul on Brian Howard, the Winston-Salem, North Carolina freshman. Lohas is very active. I right? just so impressed with the way he has improved. I watched him against the Soviets, and now here, and also yesterday, he was a spark plug for Iowa. And that, what a scintillating performance by J.J. Jesse Jackson, who we get in the second game. Lohas will get the bonus shot. He scored five today. He mentioned the game against the Soviets. Lohas had 18 points and 10 rebounds in that one. He looks like the congressman in terms of his play. Congressman Tom McMillan, when McMillan starred for Maryland. Lohas goes two for two at the line. There's the 2-2-1 two -two zone press. Tom Davis said, I learned this when I was a high school coach watching the great UCLA team of 1964 with Keith Erickson anchoring it, playing on the back line. Shackleford. What a move! Shackleford, baby, hang time, spin time, world time. The Shack takes it to the rack. And the pack is back by two, 39-37. And Lohas on his back. They're in great rebounding position out of the zone defense. Again, we see the masterful Jim Valvano. He, right now in this first half, has changed defenses. He's constantly changing until he finds one that becomes really something of difficulty for the opposition. Charles Shackelford. Quiet on the offensive end yesterday, but not today. Look at that little reverse move. Hang, spin. Hey, that's a game of horse. You lay that on them. I tell you what, not too many guys can duplicate that move. <laughs> I don't think he can if he had to try it again. Shackelford leans up and puts it in. The 11th point for Charles Shackelford. We're starting to see the real Charles Shackelford, something that's been really missing in the first two games. If they get this guy to perform like they expect with their perimeter game, they're going to be a force in the ACC. Tipped by Giomi, a foul on Giomi. And that will be his third. Mike's an excellent complimentary player. He doesn't have the kind of quickness to be a star performer. He's physical. He's got a good little baseline jump shot. And remember this, has not played basketball for a year and a half in terms of team competition. Coming into the ball game for NC State, is Chucky Brown and Giomi to the bench. And Salvano making the change with Brown. And to the line, Ed Horton. Oh, Iowa missing the front end of a one and one and trailing by three. Del Negro to Howard. With the inside outside action, he should have kicked that ball right out to Del Negro for the open jump shot. Three second violation against NC State. Three minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first half, and a timeout on the floor. The Wolf Pack leading by three. NC State 40, Iowa 37, with 313 remaining in the half. Pick in your magazine, you picked the Big Ten as the top conference in the country this year, and Iowa coming out of that Big Ten. It'll run in cycles based on recruiting and based on uh, players returning, but I think this year, if you look in the Big Ten, they have some real knockout heavyweight clubs, some real Muhammad Ali's when you talk Indiana and Illinois and Iowa and also Purdue. I think Gene Cady's basketball team, I noticed yesterday they blew out Stetson, and Stetson has a pretty good club at Stetson. And I really believe they're going to be dynamite. And you can never take Michigan or Michigan State lightly, especially at home. Look at Dr. Tom. He's smiling, relaxed, enjoying it down here. Maybe he's going skiing later. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the ACC is going to certainly be, again, a very competitive league, along with the Big East. The magical word in the Big East will be unpredictability. D.J. Armstrong for Iowa. Got to get into the seams of this zone. They're not driving the ball into the seams. Lorenzen working on ground. And three-second violation against Iowa. They're not getting enough ball movement and not getting into the seams of the defense. And they have to be able to get that little wing jump shot to open up some of the movement inside. Boy, that would look like a Tim McMahon touchdown thing. Not good basketball. That really is not big-time college basketball. You break the college scene down to the big time, the high major, the mid-major, and the low major. That was real low, low major basketball. 
So Iowa gets it right back. And Armstrong taking the three. Got to stick that jump shot up for two and in. He drove it right into the seam of the defense. Armstrong hits the 15-footer. 40-39. NC State. That's the excellent pass against the trap. Del Negro scores. Then he was seven. That's an excellent way to break the double team. Look at Armstrong. Is he drilling at P.J.? B.J. with a three-pointer. 11 for Armstrong. And it's tied at 42. We had a good first half of basketball. It's been a lot of solid coaching, good defense, and good offensive play. Benny Bolton, three-pointer. He just camps out on that wing. If I were Tom Davis, I'd have to assign someone to play almost head-to-head -head on him to negate that perimeter jump shot. NC State 45, Iowa 42. That's an excellent pass right over the top of the zone, and then you should reverse it quickly. Gamble. That's they found it inside, but State takes it away. That's the gap of the zone, though. They drilled it inside. Bolton. Nice pump fake and scores off the glass. El Negro with a real solid decision in finding Bolton at the right time. There's a look at the defense right now. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. Look at Del Negro at the top, number 14. As the ball goes to the wing, Del Negro will sink inside. See, they're matching up on the wings right now. They're not attacking the gap. Short. Round the rebound. Every zone has a gap in his seam. It is very important offensively to drive the ball into that seam. We take a look now at the Iowa zone. A minute five to go in the first half. They're playing a very passive zone right now. Very passive. As we take a look at it, not really attacking on the ball. Shot clock at 20 seconds. Game clock at 53. They're going to have to extend defensively a little bit or he's going to shoot that three-point jumper. Del Negro's trying to shape up to shoot that three-pointer. Instead, inside to Brown. Shot clock is off now. Nice pass. Marble puts it in. 47-44, NC State. That was an excellent transition half by Armstrong. Marble delivers it to two Michigan kids. How did Bill Frieda let them get out of the state of Michigan? NC State will play for the final shot here. 15 seconds to go in the half. They have to extend defensively or we're going to see a three-point attempt. Especially you got to extend on Bolton and on Del Negro. Howard's not a three-point shooter. Shackleford, up and off. Shackleford again. Back, misses, and that's the end of the first half. So the Wolfpack of NC State taking a lead of three over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Halftime at the Great Alaska Shootout. Let's go back to our ESPN studios and Gail Gardner. Thanks, Gail. Indeed, a Great Alaska Shootout between two top 20 teams. NC State leading Iowa at halftime, 47 to 44. Let's take a look at some of the replays from the first half of action. And the Iowa Hawkeyes doing a good job inside. They entered the ball inside the marble. He got away with this. There is no doubt in my mind that was an offensive play, but he's a ballerina on the baseline. And now we watch Shackelford. He had a great first half, spinning, pinning. I'll tell you something. He is so unorthodox, and this has been a real star for Iowa. Number 10 with the great pass. Marble gets the easy deuce out of a triangle, but what an excellent pass and penetration by B.J. Armstrong. Michael Reeves better get really better in a hurry because that job is going to be tough to take away from Mr. Armstrong. B.J. Armstrong with 11 points to lead Iowa. As we take a look at the first half stats, the Iowa Hawkeyes shooting 53% in all field goals as compared to State 43%. State only shot 43%, but they did an excellent job at the free throw line. We look at the three-point attempts. That's been a difference here. Shooting four for eight, 50%. Three more than Iowa with one for four. And 13 for 16 for North Carolina State from the free throw line. And that's the reason, as we look five for 10 for Iowa, that they're plus three. Also, I thought the play of Vinny Del Negro coming in the game, giving them seven big points, and the combo of Bolton and Shackelford giving them 23 between them has been the difference. Iowa's Hawkeyes able to control Benny Bolton until the last three minutes of that first half. Bolton with 12 in that first half. Well, Dick Vitale during the halftime, and Gail Gardner was updating you. 
Dick Vitale ran out onto the floor. They had some police officers chasing him, but Dick, and boy, he's really quick. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't show me shooting. I wanted to show them how I could fill that rock up from three-point land, and if a 46-year-old, one-eyed, ball-headed guy like myself could drill that jumper, <laughs> then anybody can. I just need Gail Gardner to feed me. I'll tell you one thing. She is a superstar. Iowa with control to start the second half. Lenny Wirtz hands the ball to Brad Lojas, and here we go, 47-44. Lenny Wirtz just loves wearing the zebra shirt and blowing the whistle. Some people take shots at him, but I'm going to tell you something. I really like his presence on the floor. He's in the game. He'll make errors. We all make errors. Iowa controlling. Again is D.J. Armstrong. Gamble up top. Loose ball. Gamble couldn't hang on. They scrap for it, and NC State got it. Benny Bolton dumps it over to Kenny Drummond to the Wolfpack with a three-point lead. Bolton on the wing with Drummond up top. Walker Lambiak exchanging with Drummond. Naomi Shackelford in the game as well for NC State to start the second half. Hawkeyes inside. Marble, nice move. And a soft touch. Boy, Marble, really excellent. Got the quick move when he posts up inside. He has to work on his perimeter game to be a more complete player. St. Lead is one. Shackleton. Charles with 13. NC State by three. Shackleford having a big day here today. On Bob missing. Jackal for controlling. Much more aggressive today, in offensively and defensively. Rebounding for Shackleford. Giomi missing. And Iowa rebound. Coming down to, with it, Ed Horton. Trying to recognize what I was doing defensively. To me, they might be playing a triangle in two. Another great pass from B.J. Armstrong to Roy Marble. I love his awareness on the floor. He has excellent vision and transition. B.J. Armstrong certainly has been a solid goal performer. Drummond had a dozen, but didn't take it. Bolton, they're zoning right now. Shackleford out of a double team score. Shackleford getting the ball to the interior, and he's converting something he did not do in the first two games. Shackleford, Sport Magazine's preseason pick is the ACC Player of the Year. Marble rejected. Loose ball. State has it with Bolton. He's an excellent player, but I think that's going a little bit overboard. There's some real quality players in the ACC with Kenny Smith of North Carolina. Let's take a look at Iowa's defense right now. B.J. certainly playing man-to-man -man on Kenny Drummond if you ran a trust pattern. They're playing man-to-man -man now. Walker Lambia, nice move on the baseline. Once he gets his confidence, Bob, and starts to give them some good scoring, it'd be a tremendous plus. Had a down year as a frosh last year after all the buildup coming out of high school. Low hops. Missing the three points. Gets it back. Nice Quick pass. pass to Horton inside. Makes that pass because it's great size. And there's Mr. Marble working the glass with a great leg. Iowa's been able to move in for those offensive boards. NC State leading by three. We got a good game. This is a dandy one. Excellent play right here. They're zoning right now. Change defensively. They're in a one-two-two zone. Some call it a three-two zone. Kiyomi. Back out for Benny Bolton. He just wants to play horse. I mean, he just taps out behind that wing and just loves to catch it and shoot the jumper. Bolton with 15, his third three-pointer of the day. He's from out of Damatha. We talked about it last night. Six players from Damatha. Morgan Wooten teams have played for North Carolina State. You tested me yesterday. I did my homework. I'll repeat them again. Walk guy with me, Kenny Carr. Derek Whitmer, Sidney Lowe, Quentin Jackson, and Mr. Bowler. North Carolina, sorry, Bob, North Carolina State is now zoning also defensively. Here's Lohan, and a bow. Armstrong, pass inside, Hill scores, and a foul. Hill scores with the power move inside, but again, the heady play by B.J. Armstrong. Watch the 45-degree angle in entering the ball. He enters this ball to Hill. Hill takes it up strong, deals the defensive player off with his body. See, when you take a ball on the baseline, you want to square your body to the baseline so that the defensive player cannot get in position for the block. Lester with a foul. Hill missing the free throw. Lester with a rebound. 
Gamble knocks it away. And it belongs to NC State. 56-52, the Wolfpack leading Iowa. Take a look at the full court pressure. Watch Lowhouse, the big fella, number 54. He'll try to trap after the ball's entry. And they throw it away, and Iowa takes over. I really credit that turnover to the size of Lowhouse, bothering the inbound throw. And that was going to throw the ball inbound. Iowa did a nice job with the pressure in full court against the Soviet a few weeks ago. Here's a foul against Shackleton. Shackleton really not doing a good job in his post defense. Really has to learn how to play post up defense inside in terms of positioning. Looks at Lenny Word. He's got him by about a foot. <laughs> yeah, I think Lenny will be posting him up in a pickup game anytime soon. He's got to learn how to deny the ball down inside and Mo missing the three pointer. And Lenny Bolton jumps in to get the rebound. Bowen, not really a good rebounder. In fact, Valvano would like to see a few more rebounds from Benny Bolton. 15-50 remaining in the game. NC State, four up on Iowa. Iowa's got a shade of Bolton. Wherever he is on the floor, they got to shade him to take away that jump shot. The bomb out of the corner for Bolton is good. I can't understand how they're allowing him to catch the ball, square his body, and shoot the jump shot. I really believe the Iowa coaching staff's got to make that adjustment. Hill, great pass from Lohaus. Hey, Lohaus is going to be able to make somebody's club in the NBA. He's got great passing ability, and he's going to get better and better as this year proceeds because he has not played a whole lot throughout his career at Iowa. 59-54, Wolfpack, Kenny Drummond this time. Shackelford throws it off Hill, but Shackelford was standing out of bounds when he grabbed the ball, so Iowa will have it. Stop it on the floor, 15-08, this one. It's 59, 54, and C-6. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. People who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours. Well, if you've ever wondered how Coach Vitale gets ready for ESPN telecast, here it is, right here. One Get rid of this. They're going to show this, I'll tell you. Beat your heart out, Billy Packer. You can't shoot like this. Not a bad touch. Watch this guy shoot the rock. Look at that bald head shining. <laughs> you know the string music, as Joe Dean would call out? 59-54, NC State leading Iowa. Got to have fun when you got to get up at 6 in the morning to come for a basketball game. You got to be a little wacko, and I guess that's why I'm all wacko. You take a look right now, the defenses. Marble, Armstrong, Jones for Iowa. 2-3 zone right now. CJ fakes Giomi. Now shut off inside. Deflected pass by Drummond. It's very difficult when a team is changing defenses, Bob. I really believe more clubs should go to a multiple defensive set because whenever you're changing defenses, it's very difficult as Jackson's on the floor now. Quentin Jackson from out of the mass playing out in the point right there on the basketball. Guillaume on the back of marble. It's tough to establish a rhythm. I know when I was coaching, I really used to worry so much about clubs changing on you because they just don't allow your club to get into a good offensive flow. Take another look here as Jones dumps it over and you see Giomi with a contact. Giomi's instincts right now aren't where I think he would like them to be and I think it's just a matter of time until he gets some PT and some experience playing after being out for a year and a half. Iowa trailing by five. Then Lambia knocks it out of bounds. Iowa beat Alaska Anchorage by 10 yesterday. NC State one better than Texas. Utah State. Ooh, they stole, stole it. it. Texas. They didn't beat that. They stole it. In fact, <laughs> Valvano should be 0-2. He said, I've been his lucky piece being here at his two games. Utah State over Washington by nine. And Northeastern in overtime, knocking off Louisville. Everybody was shocked around the country except Dick Vitale. I had that one nailed. Well, I wasn't really shocked because of their tremendous quickness, their experience, the great play of Reggie Lewis, a 30-point scorer, as we're having another problem with the scoreboard clock. You know, you look at Northeastern, they're really one of the big secrets in America, but they have outstanding personnel, and Carl Fogel did a solid job on a sideline. Time out on the floor, NC State by five. 
NC State leading Iowa 59-54 with 1460 to play. There's a problem with the scoreboard clock, and as we wait for them to correct that problem, the early signing period is over, and Big Vitale has his elite eight clubs well, now, that had the great recruiting. Well, I'm not at the final report cards in because they had their signing from November 12th to November 19th. I think now we can sit there and we can analyze and rate the recruiting classes and come up as Alaska welcomes us here from ESPN. I would have to go number one and A-plus for Eddie Sutton and Kentucky with Pittman and Eric Manuel, certainly one of the real premier scholastic superstars from Macon, Georgia. You have to talk about getting Leron Ellis from out of California. And then you look at Jimmy Valvano's club. I have them number two. What a tremendous backcourt they're going to be bringing into Wolfpack country. Chris Corciani, an outstanding point guard from Florida, and a scoring machine, Rodney Monroe from out of Hagerstown, Maryland. And then you talk about another class that I thought was excellent. Had to be Kansas with Masucci, a seven-footer. And then you talk about a kid by the name of Maddox that they brought in, an outstanding 6'8 player. And then you go down to Arizona. Lute Olson has a tremendous group coming in with a kid by the name of Mark Georgeson, the 6'10 kid, Sean Rook, Matt Mulebit. Matt Muleback, a point guard who can handle the ball. And right after those four, I'd go North Carolina with a tremendous tandem. King Rice, remember that name, from out of Binghamton, New York, where he broke the heart of Jimmy Beheim. I spoke at Syracuse's banquet earlier this week, and the fans up there are absolutely fanatical. I mean, they are really hungry for a great year again from Syracuse. And then right after uh, uh, King Rice, I look at UCLA had a tremendous year with a kid by the name of Sean Higgins, a scoring machine, and another guy by the name of Gerald Madkins. And then I talk about Indiana with Lyndon Jones and Jay Edwards from out of Marion High School in Indiana. And finally, number eight, I give it to a guy by the name of Pat Kennedy who coached at Iona under Jimmy Valvano, and he's at Florida State. Coming up on Monday night, the North Carolina Tar Heels will be taking on the UCLA Bruins here on ESPN. And then on Tuesday night, Indiana and Notre Dame. You know, Walt Hazard always says, hey, give us some recognition. Vital, my goal is to keep your mouth closed about saying how there's mediocrity in a Pac-10. Walter, you want to get recognition? Beat the Tar Heels at home at Pauley Pavilion, especially with them traveling all the way from Hawaii. They are ripe to be beaten by the UCLA Bruins. 14.05 to play in the game here. Iowa attacking NC State trailing 59-54, and a Benny Bolton foul is called. This uh, Alaska shootout is excellent for evaluating your team, getting a true indicator how strong or how weak you are in certain areas of play, as opposed to loading up on a bunch of appetizers and cupcakes and getting all those Ws that really almost become meaningless. And I will not say that Clemson is going to do that. And <laughs> maybe Syracuse playing a host at home and Michigan a bunch at home. I, I will do that. Jones missing. And Jack with the rebound. 59-54 NC State. 13-45 to play. Lambie out for three. Off rounds, hands. Iowa ball. Look at Valvano going absolutely bananas. Look at this all wacko. Going bananas at 11 o'clock in the morning in Alaska. There he is. A smile on his face. The charming, the ever vestant, the entrepreneur, Mr. Valvano. Marble. Kicks it out. And traveling call. Play really got sloppy after that delay. That delay could have affected the players. They were really in a good rhythm. This guy can coach on that bench. You can say all you want about his pizzazz. He has the game in perspective and knows what's happening every moment on the floor. Button Jackson. Alley Blob for Brown. Iowa takes over. And B.J. Armstrong brings him up. DJ threw it right into Jackson's chest. Got it back, though. They've got to get better balance on the floor. He's an excellent passer. Horton. Lojas missed a piece of it. Jones off his fingertips. NC State with the ball. I love the way Lojas passes the basketball. 59 54. NC State. There's the 3 2 zone, or 1 2 2. Depending on your terminology as a coach, point guy, two guys in a wing, two in the back. Remember when we talk about a zone defense, you're guarding an area of the floor as opposed to playing a specific man as you do in a man-to-man. -man. Jackson working with Bolton. Clinton buries the three-pointer. 
That's his first field goal of the year, and it's a home run shot. He's not normally a good long-range shooter. Deflection, steal for State. Tried to force something, something that wasn't there that time in their offensive set. The Wolfpack. Was Shackelford missing? That was a brick he threw up right there. I'm going to make Shackelford a member of my old bricklayers team throwing up those kind of bricks. Armstrong's pass, knocks the rock. Give it up, Shaq. You're not a guard. Give it up. That's it. Give it to the guard and go inside, big fella. Quentin Jackson. The Damatha product from Annapolis, Maryland. Very intelligent player on the floor. Doesn't have good floor speed. Doesn't have the great lateral quickness. And that's why he doesn't get a lot of PT playing time and sits on a pines a great deal. NC State last three baskets have been three-pointers. And they've taken an eight-point lead at 62-54. It's amazing how that three-point play, Bob, we've talked about it so often out of almost every possession. It's just, uh, as I've said time and time again, makes such a mockery out of basketball. Chucky Brown. And he's fouled. Brad Lohas jogs to the bench with his fourth personal. They're doing a good job attacking the zone defense of Iowa and putting a little clinic on getting the kind of shot that they want North Carolina State. And the tempo and the rhythm right now is definitely in the hands of North Carolina State. Stand corrected, Lohas did not foul. It was Ed Horton picking up his second. Lohas is out of the game. What happened to our Kevin Gamble, he disappeared. He was at MIA, missing in action because he was drilling that jumper early in the game. Indeed. Hasn't gotten a whole lot of playing time uh, since early uh, in the ball game. 63-54 NC State. Chucky Brown looks for his eighth point. And NC State with a double-digit lead. He's a second-year player. Iowa up top with it, B.J. Armstrong. Iowa had a 10-point lead in the first half. Now it's state by 10 in the second half. And a three-point shot for B.J. B.J. Armstrong is really impressive. As a typical zone trap means that you trap the basketball with a wing player and a point man. That's the way to break it. Right into the gut of the defense, posting someone up to the middle of the floor. Jackson works to Bolton. Then he has hit the four three-pointers today. Very patient, using a lot of that clock. They do not have a lot of speed on the floor. Lambiot and Jackson couldn't beat me in a 100-yard dash. <laughs> and that's not saying much because I can't run. 10.35 remaining in the game. Lambiot, three-pointer. I tell you, they just drilling that three-point play almost on every possession coming down the floor with Bolton and Lambiot and Quentin Jackson, earlier Vinny Del Negro. NC State is 8 for 13 on the three-point shots today. And banging around. Race is on. Armstrong has it, and he's fouled by Jackson. That back to three-point play was big also with Nevada, Las Vegas, Jerry Partanian's team beating, uh, uh, I guess it was Temple, Temple. with the great three-point shooting of Gerald Patio, a J.C. player from out of Seminole Junior College in All-American. Partanian just keeps flying in one body after another. Hey, they may go undefeated if they win the NIT because they really will blow right through to PCAA. I think the coach Rod Fuller said it's the best of Utah State. Since they came in the league, we play for second place. Absolutely. Here's Jones. Gamble, three-pointer. Marbley offensive board, blocked and fouled. They're gonna have to free Gamble up. He's a good-looking shooter. He's got the good form on the jump shot, and they're gonna have to get him free for some three-point plays. Take another look at the action inside. There's Marble, he attacks the glass. He's got the great bounce off the floor, the flint wonder. Yes, there he goes up strong. Fouled on a play. I really like this guy's bounce. He just has to work a little bit more on his perimeter game, developing a 16 to 17 foot jump shot. Also work on his ball handling skills. Chucky Brown with his second foul. And Benny Bolton steps up, or rather, uh, Roy Marble steps up to the line for Iowa. And his 15th point of the game. Stick one stab to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Only one team foul for Iowa here in the second half. So they can afford to gamble on defense and not put State in the one-on-one. -one. They're playing very passive. They're really not attacking the ball. Even in their pressure defense, they're not really attacking like a Tom Davis club normally does, clawing and attacking. They don't have the great speed. I don't see great speed on the floor. Pressure. 
State gets it in. Here's Brown. That was a poor pass against the pressure. Really a poor pass. They luckily got away with it. 9.50 to play in the game. 67-58, NC State. Jackson did a solid job also against Navy when he came in late in the game. Threw three lobs up to Tavy and Bins. See, he makes up for his lack of quickness with his heady instant intelligence on the floor, Jackson. You can see him throw a bad pass. Balls in. Three point. Hey, somebody better tell Iowa in their scouting report that he's just shaping up and shooting the three point line. So somebody's got to shade him. Gamble moving in, and he's fouled. And I believe they're going to call that a shooting foul. Personal charge to Quentin Jackson, number two. And Gamble to the free throw line. North Carolina State certainly looks like a different basketball team as Giomi's back on the floor than they did yesterday against Texas. They really, I thought, thought they could win at any time, and Texas totally outplayed them, and really uh, Patrick Fears was brilliant, and I thought other than that poor call at the end, Texas should have been playing this game right now. The other winner's bracket game, Northeastern at Utah State. They'll play later today here in Akron. We talked about earlier, what a contrasting style between Valvano and Tom Davis. I told you earlier, it's like Shakespeare versus Mickey Spillane. And you know who Mickey Spillane is. 70. Not Dr. Tom. 70, 59, NC State. She only wants the ball. He was opening the scheme of the defense. Walker Lambia. That's nice the Giomi. And up to get it is Kent Hill. Well, the Hawkeyes trying to put a run together here. Down 11. Marble out of control, lost it. Oh, somebody in the crowd had a whistle, and boy, that's, that's bad business. Lenny Wirtz right on top of the play immediately. They're gonna make an announcement about it. Remember, on an inadvertent whistle by an official, if the ball is released and goes in, it counts. If it doesn't go in, you go by the arrow. Now out on the floor, NC State by 11. NC State 70, Iowa 59, with 8.57 to play in the second half. They're certainly on a positive side right now because of the three-point attempt. There's Quentin Jackson, the Q-man, delivers a three-pointer. North Carolina State's on top because of it. And they have hit nine in this game. They're nine for 14, Dick. To the left right there, we see Rudy Washington pointing on the court. Rudy, an outstanding recruiter for Iowa, worked under George Raveling as we look at the Wolfpack bench. I have no idea why that whistle came from the scorer's table, not from a fan. There's the three-point attempts, nine for 14. That's 27, nine times three. I learned that in the third grade is 27 points versus six for Iowa. Be pretty quick with those numbers right there. I love math, Bob. I'll tell you the truth. I was a mathematical, I should have been a mathematical whiz. I really should have been, <laughs> and I would have made all the fans happy out there. They don't have to hear my screeching and all my comments with the Lenny Works. He didn't make my old wacko zebra team. He's a wacko. I love wacko guys. I really think they're special people. <laughs> the professorial Dick Vitale, <laughs> Mr. Math. Speaking of math, how about that 45-second shot clock? Because there are differences in the pro game and the college game when it comes to the resetting of the clock. I wish there'd be more uniformity in uh, the college game. As soon as it releases your hand, as soon as it releases from your hand, the clock is reset. On the NBA, in the NBA game, it must touch on. You know what's another different rule in terms of college and, and the pros a lot of people aren't aware of? In the college game, if you enter the ball on the floor, it has to touch a player prior to five seconds. In the NBA, you have to release it out of your hand by five seconds. Still some problems at the scorer's table, so the timeout continues. We'll take a break with NC State leading Iowa, 70-59. Right now, Bob, they're really having a problem with the uh, clock and that it's skipping time. Therefore, you should have a manual situation where they can keep the time manually on the sideline, uh, and I think that's what they might know. They're going to try to go with the clock again. It's up to 11.40, and now they have to get the score back on top. State leading 70-59 to over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Jimmy Valvano, you know, talking about North Carolina State, is a tremendous coach when you talk about tournament play. He was 12-3 and three in, the AC, in the NCAA through his career at North Carolina State, has twice taken them to the final eight, to won the national championship. And I believe a lot of that is because of his emotion and his motivational ability. 
in a one-game situation, he is absolutely tough to defend in terms of the fact that he emotionally gets his people ready to play in tournament time. Speaking of coaches, the Iowa Hawkeyes have a new band this year. Tom Davis taking over, and there's been a tendency to hire coaches with that Eastern flavor. Well, the guys from the East have really done well. Bobby Kremen, certainly a New Yorker, had a big scare yesterday from Stanford, uh, uh, certainly one of the great academic institutions in America, not known for basketball, and they challenged Georgia Tech to a two-point game with Tech coming on top. Luke Campanelli's from the East, and he's doing a great job out of California. Bobby Duquette now at Marquette University from out in the East. Gary Williams also from down at Ohio State as an Eastern coach. Pat Kennedy now at Florida State. I mean, there are a number of guys who really seem in the East to become what we call coaching uh, uh, giants and then move on. Mike Krzyzewski was coaching at uh, uh, West Point and then moved on to Duke, even though he's a Midwesterner from out of Chicago. 70-59, the clock problem appears to have been resolved. If I were Jimmy Valvano, I'd really be concerned right now as we look at Bolton, 23 points, playing fourths. He loves the three-point play. Benny says, hey, this is made to order for me because I don't want to rebound and I don't want to play defense. I want to shape up and shoot the J. I didn't say that. Now, don't get mad, Benny. I'm only saying it because I love you. But, uh, you know, getting back to uh, North Carolina State, I really believe right now that can affect them. They were having Mo on their side, momentum. They were playing well, and then all of a sudden, keep the score. It'll be interesting to see what happens since this change of time. NC State's up by 11 now, 70-59. 835 to play in the game. Here's the aforementioned Benny Bolton. And Kevin Gamble picks his pocket. There's a lackadaisical play to turn over. Lohas to Armstrong. Lohas can shoot the three-point play. They can shape him up. They need some three-point plays right now. Armstrong. Gamble and Lohas. Front. Gamble and Lohas would be their three-point shooters. Armstrong hitting the home run. 17 points in the game for Armstrong. 70-62. Iowa trailing by eight. We took a look right there how they had a reverse man against the trap. As soon as they trapped the basketball, they had one guy one step behind the ball as a reverse man, North Carolina State, to break the trapping zone. Walker Lambia. Nice jump shot. What a difference a year makes. He's shooting the ball with so much more confidence than he did last year. 72-62 State. Inside. Gamble with a bang. He took the defenders and put it in. Good move by Gamble. He showed he's a good perimeter player, and now he shows ability to play on the boxes. And fouling on the press is Gamble. He was a first-team All-America in junior college. They can afford the press right now, and then Gamble through steal and foul because it's only their second foul here in the second half. Remember, we've got to hit number seven to get in a bonus. 731 to play. See, their traps can get a little bit more aggressive right now. They can really take a gamble and go for the ball. He's hand checking him. Get your hand off him. That's a no no, Lenny. Can't let him hand check him. Lenny's telling him. Mo's trying to hand check him. See, he's trying to put a hand on him. Near steal. Chucky Brown. Oh, that's by Loha. That's a walking violation. Oh, definitely double dribble. Here's Bolton driving. And a thought coming up on Iowa. Tom Vano lives a charm life. I tell you, things rotate his way. Tell him, Tom. Tell him, Dr. Tom. Shakespeare, come on out. Tell him. Don't be so cool and calm. Valvano wouldn't be cool and calm. Explode, Dr. Tom. Personal foul coming up against Roy Marble. Chucky Brown. Chucky Brown definitely double dribble the basketball. That's the third on Marble. So NC State plays it in with Benny Bolton. 6.57 to play and an eight-point lead for the Wolfpack. Lambiot missed the three. Iowa rebounding with Ed Horton. The big horse out of Springfield, Illinois. Get it to Lohas for the three. There it is. Chucky Brown rebounding. Chucky Brown doing a solid job off the bench, giving him some real plus minutes, scoring, rebounding, very active player. Lambie out, circles the wagon, gives to Quentin Jackson. And a man defense right now by Iowa, come out of the zone, Giomi. Good score move by Giomi, taking it right into the face of the low house. 
NC State by 10. Bo for three. Iowa keeps it alive. Horton travels. Mike Tangle with the ball. Got him for the travel. Watch the big fellow Horton operate on the baseline. Lifts his pivot foot. Could have had him for an offensive foul, but the walk-in violation came prior to the offensive foul. Good call by Tango. 6-11 to play. Watch Lohaus trap after the ball's inbound. And oh. Barbo with the steal. Boys taking it up. And in and out, no good. Barbo gets it back. And he's an athlete. No, oh, it's what out a of tough there. break. Lohaus on the back. And a foul is called. What Boy, Iowa, some tough luck, Dick. They had tough luck. They make the steal. They force the turnover. Marble explodes to the goal. Lowhouse is not a quick jumper, as we'll see right here. There's the trap. Now, here comes Marble. Good athletic ability. He doesn't get the roll his way. And there is Lowhouse. He's playing tippy-toe, tippy-toe. And there's Chucky. Chucky Brown's an active player. They release Chucky Brown. Time, five second violation. I guess NC State, the ball must be touched. It must be touched. Remember, in college basketball, the ball has to be caught prior to the count of five. In the NBA, that would have possibly counted because all that has to happen in the NBA is that the baseline guy released the ball from his hand. All of the Celtics with the long pass. Alvano says there's no way that was a five-second violation. He's hot. Remember, this year they changed the change of status rule also. In the past, you had to get a timeout prior to the count of four. Now you don't. You got the full five. Armstrong for three. Oh, nobody back. Armstrong, no one rotates back. Hey, look at the happy actors. I just jumped. Look at me. Jamming Walker. I believe it was Clinton Jackson, Duke, who made that play by batting the ball down the floor to Lambia. Intelligent play, but Jeff Moe did not rotate back in transition. Iowa needs a timeout, and they get one right now. But North Carolina State totally in command. 5.39 to play, and the Wolfpack leading by 12. N NC State. Oh, there's the deflection. Four leaders. Excellent deflection by Quentin Jackson. Here comes Walker Lambie. He smells the deuce. He's a freight train. 6-7, Woodstock, Virginia. Concentration. Up he goes. Up, up, away. Slam, jam, bam. Walker Lambiot. <laughs> he was something else in high school when he hooked up with Kevin Madden, as we talked about yesterday. Now Madden's an academic casualty for the University of North Carolina. And that's one area where North Carolina could be a little bit weak. They do not possess what we call the number three man, a real bona fide outstanding athlete. It's going to be important to 18 guys. to play. Tom Davis basketball teams, if you studied them at Lafayette, Boston College, at Stanford, he has always used, always has utilized the traps. And Jimmy Valvano sweating heavily, had this game in Lock City, <laughs> and his club just absolutely got careless with the basketball. Armstrong, Gamble, three-pointer marble. Go what a great offensive for Hill. That's a man. That's a man on the clap. Here comes the pressure again with Mohan, seven-footer. And a personal on Marble will send Shackelford to the line. Not a bad move because Shackelford's not a really strong free throw shooter. Now today, he's in three out of four, but 50% coming into the game. Three out of four, I'd say stats prove that they're against him right now. I mean, if you go by stats, he's normally about a 60% shooter. Shackelford, we talk about the hairline fracture in his wrist. He injured it on a dunk in practice. Yeah, he tried a gorilla dunk on November 1st. Dick Vitale calls it again. Iowa can Uncle tie with a two-pointer, take the lead with a three-pointer. Uncle Mo is certainly on their side right now. He has arrived in Iowa City. Except we're in Alaska. <laughs> Glad you noticed. Here's Gamble. Oh, going. Gamble with the strong cross. North Carolina State has totally, really lost their core. Cool. They're rattled. Shackelford brought it up. Lambiot to the basket. They are rattled. Shackelford. Unbelievable. Tied at 82. They're getting the most two involved here, but unbelievable. They could have had the offensive foul on Shackelford, and he gets a big basket. Timeout. 
A minute nine to play. NC State 82 and the Iowa Hawkeyes 82. We better have North Carolina State every time because they are so exciting. It just seems that drama. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about the excitement, how it follows Valvano. It's amazing. We've had them now. This is the third game, and everyone comes right down to the last possession. This guy is blessed with that kind of charm, and he usually pulls them out. I don't think Jimmy Z wanted a close game after he had Iowa down by 10. No, he wanted to relax. He wanted his stomach to be settled. That mailbox is churning like crazy right now inside. You talk about this Iowa comeback, Dick. They've outscored NC State 18 to 4 in the last three minutes. And that's what an excellent zone trap could do for you. And again, Tom Davis' basketball team, look at him right now. He's been stressing the importance of the trapping defense. And just this, this, this just makes your players believers. One of your keys to winning for NC State, Dick, was to control the Iowa pressure. They've wilted under that pressure here in the last two months. They have just rattled. They have just lost all kinds of spacing on the floor. There hasn't been really the good ball reversal, the post-up move. There's only so much a coach can do. I mean, Jimmy Valvano certainly is designing the way to attack that pressure, but his players have to go out and execute. And I really think when you look at their club, they just got very complacent when they had that big lead. A minute nine remaining for NC State and Iowa. 82 82 on the Hawkeyes of the basketball. DJ oh. Armstrong has scored a career high 20 today. He's played a solid game, a solid goal game. DJ out of Brother Rice High School. I mean, this club was down for the count. They were wobbly. It was like Marvin Hagler when he's going to have Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, banging on the ropes, having them down for the count. But they've come back. 2-3 zone right now by North Carolina State. The philosophy here just worked with a good shot. Got to get it into the seams. Look for the high percentage shot. Not necessarily looking for a three, that's for sure. Gamble has been hot today. Watch Marble along the baseline. Here he comes. Marble in the corner. They like now to, Armstrong. They like to put him on what they call the clock position and run him on that baseline. Shot clock becoming a factor, Dick. It's down to 10. Marble, and they're going to call traveling on Roy Marble. So Iowa turns it over, and Jimmy V's Wolfpack with it with 39 seconds to go. Right now, the entry is really important. Del Negro is going to get a timeout. The Wolfpack. They're going to talk it over here with 39 seconds to play, tied at 82. Remember, they can spread the court and go right down to the last shot and not have to wait until, in other words, they can take it right down to the last three or four seconds and then go for the offensive rebound on the miss. We look at the keys to winning we posted earlier. They had to control the pressure defensive Iowa. They have not controlled that. They definitely have not handled Iowa's press, especially late when winning time was there. They've contained Roy Marble, basically. And then we look down here. Iowa's got to close down Bolton's game, and they have not done it. Bolton's had an outstanding perimeter game, and they've got to establish a transition game. And they have not been able to get a good running game. But the reason we got ourselves a war right now is because of the pressure defense of Iowa. Iowa has 31 rebounds in this game, 17 of them offensive. Dick Vitale, legend in Anchorage, Alaska. People have been treating me great up here. I don't know. I Curry Kirkpatrick with that article in Sports Illustrated. I'll tell you, Curry, CK came through for Dickie V. He's made me like a celebrity out here. I can't believe it. Immediately following our game, we'll be checking in with Gail Gardner in our ESPN studios. Stay tuned for that. 82 all here with 39 seconds to play. Okay, let's set the scenario. In the last two games that North Carolina State has played, Kenny Drummond is the guy that wants the ball and has taken the last shot. Right now, also you have to be concerned if you're Iowa with the offensive rebounding prowess of Charles Shackleford. But the key right now for Valvano is inbounding the ball. Here comes the baseball. Oh, what a Armstrong knocked it out of Drummond's hands and NC State maintains possession. He tried to release Drummond. Remember, that ball has to be caught prior to the count of five. And anytime you're putting a ball the length of the court like that, you're really taking a gamble, a real gamble. Whistle stopping play. The shot clocks are off, but they should be. Yeah, it's under 45 seconds. You can turn off the shot clocks right now because we're down to 38 seconds left in the game. 
Now that was a good entry. 15 foot pass. There's the trap. You got to get it out of that trapping area and spread the court. This kid's not afraid to shoot the ball. Drummond, he wants the ball. They're going to run it right down. I thought yesterday he took a bad shot shooting it as early as he did. Drummond. Oh, there's Foul the ball. That's the ball. Iowa. Kevin Gamble, his fourth, and Kenny Drummond goes to the line. Kenny Drummond is at 67% of his free throws. Look at him clapping. He loves two games. He loves to be the hero. Look at him smiling. There's no pressure on him. Drummond is one for two today and has scored four points. He's been on the bench quite a while, uh, Bob, so you really don't know if he's got that touch and flu. Good timeout also. Make him think about it. Ice him a little bit more. Take him outside and he'll really get iced <laughs> down out here in Alaska. 22 seconds remaining. 82-82, NC State and Iowa. Yesterday for the Wolfpack, two Walker Lambiot free throws after time had expired to beat Texas. And today, it's Kenny Drummond on the line with a one and one tied at 82. The Great Alaska Shootout continues. Coming up, the Texas Longhorns taking on the Alaska Anchored Seawolves. And the Seawolves have two of the more interesting players in Division II basketball, Jesse Jackson and Hansi Ganon. Jesse Jackson had 37 yesterday, and I'm not talking about the reverend. This guy's not a politician, especially when he has the ball. He's not going to be political with anyone. He's so quick. And right now, let's get down into the strategy here. There's Valvano talking about what to do defensively. He has to stress the positive now. He really wants to say in that huddle, when Kenny makes these two free throws, look at those eyes. Are they bulging? Are they into this game? The mouth's going 99,000 miles a minute. They can't understand a word he's saying. He talks about Casey Stengeli. See now, yeah, Iowa Hawkeyes guys coming out of the huddle away from Tom Davis now. And Tom's got to be going over several things, too. If he hits one, if he hits two, do you think three-point shot to win it? A lot of things running through his mind. Yeah, right now, he's got to be thinking, basically, if this kid comes up short, what he would like to do in terms of the last shot. But I believe he'll get another T.O. timeout if he gets possession of the ball key right now. Drummond seems so relaxed. I mean, look at number four. He can't wait. He, he, he wants to go to that foul line. Kenny Drummond, the man who hits the three-pointer to beat Navy a week ago today in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's a long way from Springfield to Anchorage, but Drummond, the man on the spot right here. He's from Peoria, Illinois, Sacramento City College, MVP last year. Dick Versace recommended him to Jim Valvano. Versace, the former coach at Bradley, Look at him, he's flopping his hands. And Lenny Wirth's going out to make sure Tom Davis gets his team out. Tom really had him in that huddle a long time. Drummond's like saying, get me the ball, huh? Official, all these timeouts, what do they mean? They're not going to bother me. I think they're going to bother him. I really think sitting on that sideline as long as he did. Watch, he said, no, Dickie V, no, I'm ready. Oh, and it goes. Certain kids just love pressure. And I really believe he is one of them. Drummond was five. 83, 82 state, 22 seconds to go. Keep in mind the three-point play. If he converts this to a three-point shooter, Gamble certainly won. In the bucket. That's the roll. Iowa brings it up with B.J. Armstrong. Two different schools of thought. Some say get the timeout with about 10 seconds instead of play. Others say go through the flow of your offense. DJ taking it inside. Loose ball. They knock it free. Iowa's got it. Five seconds to go. Armstrong to the bucket. And a foul is called with one second to play. Well, as Lady Luck smile on Mr. V again, does he come up short here, B.J. Armstrong, or does he take this game to OT overtime? One second remaining. NC State prying that ball loose. Here's the drive by B.J. There's the flashing move by Armstrong. Armstrong hanging in the air. He's attacked right now. Looks like a deflection, but he was bumped, it seemed to me, by Chucky Brown. Third foul on Chucky. And now the pressure shifts to the other side of the floor and from Kenny Drummond to B.J. Armstrong. We go, we go from one point guard to another. B.J. Dick Vitale. Here's a, another here. look. Take the ball, his look reversed out. Now here comes Armstrong. The clock is going down. He lets it go at the two 
little better than two. Probably about 1.5 seconds remaining right now in the game. DJ, eight for eight at the lines this year, 91% last year. Remember in college basketball, the buzzer has to go off, not just showing three to zero before zero in terms of the clock. Armstrong puts the first one in. Now State takes a timeout with a one-point lead. So B.J. Armstrong has Iowa halfway to the overtime. He'll come back and take another free throw when we return. He stayed leading by a point. This is Jimmy Valvano on the sideline as B.J. Armstrong put in that first free throw. Here's the reaction of Coach B. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, how much luck do you want? You've had so much already this season. Coach's dream of having, there's Dr. Tom, cool as can be under pressure. He's got his doctorate. I can't spell the word doctorate. Uh, here comes down Armstrong. We're either going OT. Time for tip-in. See, the NBA, you could set up the ball at half court after the score here in college basketball. You've got to get it on the baseline. This is the top. takes the timeout. One second remaining. They're mixing schools of thought right here. Tom Davis gets the timeout to set up his defense, but he gives also an opportunity for them to set up the baseball pass the length of the court for trying to get the ball in bounds. But some believe in, in calling the timeout, others do not. It's just a coaching philosophy and, and, and a coaching decision. Really. I would think, Dick, the hope here for Iowa is to force the five-second violation. It's going to be awfully tough for them to try to come up with a steal and throw the ball to goal. But if they can get the five-second violation and get the ball under the basket, they're yeah. on basket, then right. they've got a chance to pull it out. But you got to also be careful right now of a whistle and a foul by going through that kind of an aggressive defense trying to force the turnover. Maybe you're better saying, look, we're down by 12, we came back, we're gonna, let's take them in overtime since we really are now the positive club. We're playing a little bit better than we did earlier. Right now, you've got to be very careful of that whistle in terms of that foul that can end this game. We saw a whistle yesterday in North Carolina State went out the winner against Texas when that game should have been over and should have been a Texas win. Well, the pressure of the national spotlight in the closing seconds of this game certainly did not bother either Kenny Drummond or B.J. Armstrong. They both nailed their free throws. They were CC. They were calm and cool and, and also collective, the three Cs. Here's Roy Marble coming out. He scored 19 today. And I was going to relax and just put Lojas on the throw-in. Well, they're going to throw the, throw the desperate pass a la, let's say, Testaverde. And here it comes. Shackleford, oh, it oh, would have oh. counted had it gone in. Let's tip it up. NC off. State nearly pulled it off. Let's tip it up. There's Ray Martin, former Notre Dame starting guard. There's the baseball pass. He just throws the Hail Mary. Remember Flutie throwing that Hail Mary against Miami? He throws it up. Look at the acrobatic. Remember, the clock doesn't start until the ball is touched. Hmm. Close, but we're going to overtime. NC State, Iowa, tied at 84. Thanks, Gail. We're back. The overtime just underway. NC State controlling the tip. 84-84. The Wolf Pack in Iowa. And here's a foul inside and Marble fouling Benny Bolton. Remember, in an overtime period, it starts with a jump ball. The game starts with a jump ball, and an overtime period starts with a jump ball. Nobody Bolton will be stepping up. That's the fifth foul on Marble. I believe he's gone. Yes, we had four, but uh, we stand corrected. Five fouls on Marble. Tom Davis going to his bench, and it looks like he's going to put Jeff Moe in the game. Watch the play inside. Oh, look at the hole right there. Marble's definitely hooking him. He's holding him. He's mugging him. He's tackling him. Hey, Hayden Fry, get Roy Marble on a football <laughs> field. Well, he got his money's worth on the last foul. Tom Davis, hates to see that young star go to the bench. That was an NBA mugging foul. Benny Bolton. 21 today. 
plays without a lot of emotion, very relaxed, very poised. Left-handed shooter. NC State has done a good job on the free throw line. 81% in two games coming into today. TB with a good touch. His roomie, Spud Webb, was his roomie when he played with Spud. You gotta be proud of Benny Bolton right now. 23 for Benny, and NC State takes a two-point lead, 86-84. Drummond wants to really pressure the basketball. He's a kid that loves to play man-to-man. -man. He had over 200 steals in junior college, but he sits in a 2-3 zone because they don't have the other people that can play man-to-man -man defense. Not enough floor speed. ESPN College Basketball, every telecast it seems. We've got a game that comes right down to the wire. Overtime last night with Louisville and Northeastern. My fourth in a row, Bob. We had the Navy game also was a wire job. What a story for college basketball. What a story. Shot clock at six, five, four. Armstrong faking, firing, blocked by Drummond and a foul on Drummond. Looks like he got all ball, but maybe a piece of the body, Dick. He had the ball, but he definitely made contact with his body. It runs over to Jimmy Valvano. Jimmy barking out some signals to Drummond. The foul on Kenny Drummond. What a great high school. This kid comes from out in Birmingham, Michigan. And having lived in West Bloomfield, Michigan, I can tell you that Brother Rice is certainly one of the class high schools in the United States, academically as well as athletically. They got a great, great guy and as a football coach there, Alfred Cassa. Tremendous basketball coach, Nick Conti. And they got two seven fours. He missed. He missed one. That's a shocker. Are you ready for this? His high school, B.J. Armstrong, he's telling me yesterday, they have two seven-foot-four brothers that play Mike and Jim Lanier. B.J. puts this one in. One time at Brother Rice at 26 to 27 free throws in the game. There's Aloha. Up on the baseline, the seven-footer. See, that's, you want to post the guy to the middle and then bring the ball to the weak side. 86-85. And two stays. 350 left to play in the overtime. And a man defense now by Tom Davis. Comes out of the zone. Bolton missed the three-pointer. Lambiot picks up the rebound and misses. Iowa has it. Down a point. Bolton is much more effective against the zone defense where he steps into the seam than he is against man-to-man. I think it's a good coaching decision by Tom Davis going to the man. 2-3 zone. Usually the wings are wide open against the 2-3 zone. If you swing the ball from side to side and drive it to the middle of the floor, step on a wing, the wings are usually open for the jump shot. We're in overtime. The Great Alaska Shootout. Iowa and NC State. Mo for three. All right. Jackal for head. NC State leading 86-85. Man-to-man, -man, Armstrong versus Drummond. We got a lot of speed in that matchup. They're looking for Shackelford. Yeah, man-to-man -man should open up Shackelford on the inside. Yomi, soft touch for two. Yomi, good little baseline player. Newark, Ohio. Nice little baseline move by Mike Giomi. NC State. Now with a three-point lead. He's got to drive it to the wing. Drive it to the inside. Jeff Moe's got to drive it there and bang it to the wing. Armstrong's going to be wide open here on a wing. He walked. He right had the one. jump shot, and he took the extra step, lifted his pivot foot. AJ, he's I'm crying bad. a little bit. He's crying a little bit. We'll get the towel out for him. Come on, BJ. He definitely walked. 86-85. Tom Davis and the Hawkeyes. Three down. NC State with it. 2.20 left in the overtime. Kevin Gamble matched up on Bolton. Gave up his dribble. That's a no-no. Putting the ball to the deck. Giving up the dribble. Jackalford pushing to get position. And that turns it over. Sticky Stewart does a solid job on the sideline for North Carolina State. Former head coach at uh, Fordham University. He's excellent in offensive concepts. I really believe he's got to work one-on-one -on -one with Charles Shackelford on learning how to post inside a little bit better, how to get free for the ball and establish good post position. Jimmy Valvano delegates responsibility to his three assistants, Martin McLean and Stewart. Here's a chance today for Iowa to score some points about the clock run. Free throws here with 208 by Kent Hill. 
his seventh point of the game. He's an interesting player. I watched him yesterday. I thought he provided a tremendous spark off the bench against the University of Alaska Anchorage. One for two in the line today. Shattered a backboard in a preseason practice a couple years ago. Show me with good position inside. Not a great jumper. 88-86, NC State. Iowa's missed two free throws here in the overtime. Drummond, three-pointer. Iowa's got it. Jones brings it out. Nice bounce to Hill. Rejected by Diomi. Diomi with a tremendous defensive play. Oh, Bob Knight's going to be proud of Diomi on that play. Excellent timing, aggressive play by Mike Diomi. And a steal on the win. Give it up to the middle. And a steal stolen back by Drummond, and a foul is called on Iowa. Great defensive play and anticipation by Kenny Drummond. Jones gave it up a step too late. He gives it up a little sooner. He gets the ball back for an easy layup. 88-86. State leading with a minute 28 to play. A wild and woolly overtime. Drummond to the line. He hits two at the end of regulation to give State a lead. Back there here in the extra period. They had a two-on-one transition. All Jones had to do was, as soon as he made that steal, kick it back to the middle and get it back. But he waited a little bit too long. Stayed by three. Drummond has scored seven. I'm going to call him Ice Drummond. I'll tell you something. This guy's got ice in his veins. He just, no pressure bothers him. He just enjoys it. He said, pressure, pressure's all my life, you know. I mean, you talk about my buddy used to tell me, he said, hey, you talk about pressure. Pressure was when my mama threw the bone to the dog. The dog had a signal for a fear and catch. <laughs> We're coming after the bone. Missing the free throw. Shackleford with a tip, but Jones has it. So Iowa now with a minute 20 to play in the game in the overtime and down by three. Jones was a starter most of the last year, also at 6'7". They're getting a good angle on a post up inside. Look for Lowhouse trying to post down inside. D.J. Armstrong, three-pointer to tie the game. Got it. That's the wing jump shot. Split the guy on top. Excellent play, D.J. Armstrong. Deflected ball, but Lambiot has it. Tied at 89 and under a minute to go. Jones gives him great size in the backcourt. He's matched up at 6'7". Here's Shackleford going to wheel to the goal. Hook, missing. Iowa rebound. Iowa, good rebounding basketball team. Gamble with the big rebound. Iowa, four down now, tied at 89. The time on the lower right corner of your screen. They're splitting the guy on top. Kenny Drummond should open a seam to the inside. Loha. Gamble on the wing. Hit some big jumpers early in the game. Go, go. Spreading the court. Spreading the guy on top. Armstrong has hit five out of six from three-point land. He's got it now behind the circle. They got Lohaus inside. They missed him. Eight seconds, seven on the shot clock. You see the game clock. Three-pointer, short. Loha Good offensive board, rebound. Goes up, he's fouled. Good Lohaus offensive rebound. Line. Brad Lohaus gets good offensive position inside. We're looking at three on the game clock right now with Lohaus on the line with a high basketball game. Has Lady Luck ran out on Jimmy V. Uh, here comes Armstrong with the jumper. He shoots the jumper. Now watch Lohaus get inside position. Out of the zone, you don't get block out assignment. And there he is. And right there comes up with a big rebound. And Shackelford a step too late. And there's the contact. Brad Lohaus. He's a good shooter. Two for two at the line today. A 79% free throw shooter last year for the Hawkeyes. Iowa's got everybody back. Intelligent move by Tom Davis. And he could start celebrating in Iowa. Put it down right now. Iowa City will be celebrating. First shot. Oh, the net. He took his food. Great release. Great touch. There's Dr. Tom laying out all kinds of signals. 90-89, Iowa. See, that's one of the problems with the zone defense, getting that block out of He missed it. They take time. Two seconds to go in the game. A 90-89 lead for the Iowa Hawkeyes, but NC State will have it when we come back. 
We're back. Two seconds to go in overtime. Iowa 90, NC State 89. And the Wolfpack, they've got to go the length of the floor, Dick Vitale. they got to go the length of the floor. And right now, Jimmy Valvano is trying to pull out another magical act that he's had go his way those first two games of the season where he's 2-0. and He's got to get the ball down the court. Look for, you know, like a guy like Drummond popping off the screen, catching the ball and letting it fly. Jimmy V might be using all his miracles up here in the pre-conference season. He's still got to march through the ACC. Well, his goal is to win 20 games, get in the NCAA tournament. Uh, uh, he says if we can go 7-7 seven and seven during the ACC year and win most of our pre-conference games, we'll be here at the 20-game mark. Shackleton, end of regulation in this position. Had a chance to catch the ball and lay it up toward the basket. I think back to Samson against the Lakers last year, that type of play, but they've got to throw it 94 feet. And they're going to put the big guy, Tom Davis, is going to make sure he has size, bother the guy, throwing it inbound. Bolton's about 6'7". He can, right now, Bolton is going to have the ball handed to him from the official. He cannot run that baseline. They throw it off Lorenzo's leg. The clock doesn't Watch move. Well, there might have been more than two seconds. Could be anywhere from 2.5. Now State gets to the three-quarter court. He wants to get a little closer. Always thinking Jimmy V. Watch Drummond. Drummond wants the ball. Drummond, I think he can get a shot. Right here, Drummond can get a shot. A count to the go! Oh! Oh! So the two coaches, Tom Davis and Jim Valvano, who battled in the small colleges, meet today. And a top 20 battle goes Iowa's way. I thought they'd go to Drummond, and there he is. He lets it fly. He makes it. Will it go? No, Lady Luck in for Jimmy V. And they're celebrating on the Iowa campus. Take another look. Check out Jackalford after the ball pops out. Go to the glass, Jack. Jack's got to go to the rack and try to rebound. There it is. He flies. There's no more time, baby. It's got to go here. If it doesn't go there, it's all over. The Iowa Hawkeyes in overtime. I'm with the winning coach right now, and Lady Luck ran out on Jimmy Valvano and smiled on Utah. 14 down, four minutes left in the game, and the Tom Davis zone pressure came to the front. Well, I, I don't know if it was the Tom Davis pressure or the Iowa players, Jack. Uh, they just came through brilliantly under pressure and with different Don't lineups. give me the modest <laughs> sack. You did a superb uh, job on uh, the bench. I appreciate that, but it was a terrific effort by the team because we got a lot of new guys in there trying to fit in. I'm very, very proud of this ball club. Well, I tell you what, what were you thinking when you were 14 down? I mean, you know yourself, being a, you try not to think about it. You just try to think the next play, let's do a good job, let's do this, let's do that. Calm your players down. We got rattled. Jimmy does a terrific job on the bench, and they'd rattle us, and then we'd have to try to get our composure back. We're going to look at the last two seconds, and I want to know what your heart was doing <laughs> when Kenny Drummond let that fly. Here, we take a I look just, at it. I'll tell you, he got a nice shot off under those two. BJ played good defense on him, you know, just to stay straight up, and that baby could have gone. If that would have went in, if Valvano would have won his third straight when he should have been always three, <laughs> I would have just given up coaching. But you know, Tom... I think you found a great point guard. I really love B.J. Armstrong. We're very pleased with B.J. Deck. I think the good thing about him, he can play off the ball, too. So I look for him in the future to play second guard as well as point guard because I think he has that nice outside shot. The Big Ten is certainly going to be tough this year. I rank it as oh. one of the top conferences in America, number one. What about the status of Gary Wright? You're playing without Sir Jamalot. He's got the fractured wrist. When will he be back? Well, we're hopeful in January sometime, Dick. I, I tell you, as I mentioned to you before, he's the closest thing I've ever had to Keith Erickson of those great UCLA teams back at the back of the pressure. And so we're really trying to recover from the loss of Gary. When we get him back, if he's healthy, he's going to add a dimension to our team. Go in a locker room, enjoy the W, right. go out to Alaska. In nine years, the Great Alaska Shootout has become the nation's premier preseason basketball tournament.